Get your backpack ready. It's time to brainstorm another trip. This week in our whirlwind tour of the history of science, let's travel to early 17th century Italy, the early 1600s. The 17th century is the era of Kepler, Galileo, Descartes, William Harvey, Francis Bacon, Robert Boyle, and Isaac Newton. This is the final century we will visit on our tour, so we will spend the next three weeks getting to know better some of these figures of 17th century science in terms of their own place and time. I hope you'll make some meaningful and unexpected discoveries this week as we explore the strange new world of Galileo. Though we have just a limited time to visit, we'll not be like tourists in Venice or Florence who seek fast food at McDonald's. Our aim will be to get to know Galileo in terms of his own place and time, not just in terms of modern science. In addition to the universities and court settings for science that we have already discussed, which remained very important for the support of science, the 17th century saw the emergence of scientific societies, such as the Academia dei Lincei, the Academy of the Lynx, and the Royal Society of London. These scientific societies provided critical support to Galileo and Newton, respectively, as we shall see. What do you know about scientific institutions in early modern times? Everyone knows something about Galileo, but very few people really understand the circumstances of his life. For example, what did Galileo do at the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Many people believe Galileo dropped two objects of differing weights from the top of the Leaning Tower in order to prove that they would strike the ground at the same time. However, this is just one of many urban legends about Galileo. There is no evidence that this event ever happened. It's just part of the Galileo mythology. Moreover, because of air resistance, the two objects would not have struck the ground at the same time, and Galileo knew it. Only in a vacuum, such as for astronauts on the moon, does Galileo's law of free fall precisely apply. Besides, the conclusions of such an experiment had already been explained in the Roman era, Critique of Aristotle, by John Philoponus. So who was Galileo? How can we strip away our misconceptions? What was he really like? As always, when we're planning a trip, we want to better understand what people in this place and time were up to. What are some similarities between Galileo's world and our culture today? How might these similarities help us to understand Galileo? And what are some differences between Galileo's world and our culture today? How might these differences pose an obstacle to our understanding of Galileo? What do you think might be the chief barrier or prejudice that obstructs our appreciation of Galileo? What would you most like to discover about Galileo this coming week? Please share your thoughts. What are your starting assumptions?